Welcome to episode number cinco of Russell Erotica. This week, like every week, we have another two stories to uh, focus on. And the first story is entitled Undertaker and Mickey James. And the second story is called Touch, the New Axe. And the second story is probably my favorite story that we've featured on here. And little did I know that Pete Knight was the hero and champion that we all needed. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the stories. This story is entitled Undertaker and Mickey James, and it is written by Literotica.com user Venus and Furs. A young woman dressed in a cute pink outfit stood in the center of the ring. Behind her was an athletic-looking blonde woman tied to a chair. Even through the cloth that bound her mouth, she was obviously terrified. Her eyes flitted around like trapped birds, looking for some way to escape from this woman who seemed to hate her for no reason. You remember Ashley, right? Your best friend Ashley? Mickey James taunted someone backstage, laughing hysterically as she played with her hair, which was done up in pigtails. She smiled when she heard a woman's laugh come over the sound system, and her smile was strangely innocent, considering she had a woman tied up behind her. Trish Stratus' music hit, and the curvy blonde woman's champion ran to the ring. Her eyes focused, darting anxiously between Ashley and Mickey. If you come any closer, I'm going to hit her, Mickey shrieked when Trish started to jump into the ring. Her voice suddenly held absolute manic sincerity, and the lovely woman's champion had no choice but to believe her capable of anything. She stopped right outside the ring and stood there, her large brown eyes desperately searching for an opportunity to save her friend. Mickey, obviously glorying in the power she held in this situation, walked over to the ropes where Trish was standing, anxiously craning her head, trying to see if Ashley was hurt. Mickey looked down at her idol with a crazed expression in her eyes. Don't you want to save your best friend Ashley, Trish? Mickey's eyes whirled and sparkled crazily as she looked gloatingly over her shoulder at the bound Ashley, and Trish saw her opportunity in this moment of inattention. While Mickey was still looking at Ashley, relishing her obvious terror, Trish grabbed Mickey's hill boot. She yanked it, sending Mickey tumbling out of the ring to land on the floor in a heap. Seizing her newfound advantage, Trish jumped on top of Mickey and started pummeling her with her fist. Mickey instinctively curled up into a ball to protect herself from the other woman's attack, and Trish released her hold, jumping quickly into the ring. She sprinted over to the center of the canvas where Ashley was tied tightly to a chair. Desperately, she tried to untie the knots and free the helpless woman, becoming completely engrossed in her task. She didn't notice when the still-gagged Ashley started moaning gesturing with her head. Trish had been too eager to get to her friend, and her lack of forethought cost her. Mickey was suddenly right there, and the last thing Trish felt was her head driving into the mat in a tornado DDT. She felt her world go dark around the edges as she passed out, her hair spreading over the canvas as she slumped nervously down to the floor. Mickey laughed again and walked over to Trish's unconscious form. Ashley could do nothing but watch in shock belief as Mickey knelt down beside the fallen form of her former idol. Mickey's nose was still bleeding profusely from her attack, and blood dripped onto Trish's cheek as Mickey held her head, almost lovingly between her hands. Do you love me now, Trish stared at us? Mickey howled insanely into Trish's blank face. She laughed once more as she bent down and pressed her full lips against Trish's slack, unresponsive mouth. She kissed her passionately, then, without warning, dropped Trish carelessly to the mat. Trish lay there, unable to respond, still unconscious. Mickey threw back her head and laughed, her body convulsing with glee as she jumped energetically out of the ring. She didn't seem to feel any qualms about leaving Ashley tied helpless in the ring. She didn't even look back at her professed love as she walked towards the curtain that led backstage. A tall man, dressed all in black, watched the whole scene from the shadows just behind that same curtain. He was standing perfectly still, and if you didn't know he was there, you wouldn't have been able to see him. His arms were crossed across his broad chest, and his green eyes gleamed in his otherwise impassive face as he watched Mickey walk up to the aisle towards him. Very few people would have known how to read the expression on his face, because to most people it would seem that he had no expression. But if you looked in his eyes, you could see something flickering slightly in their depths, something that seemed very close to approval. He watched her as she pulled open the curtain, making no move to show her that he was there. Her cheeks were glowing and her chest was heaving with her excited breath. When she moved past him, she was practically bouncing as she walked, obviously still energized from the scene she had initiated with Trish in the ring. She was completely oblivious of his eyes on her as she walked down the hall and into her dressing room, closing the door behind her. It wasn't long after that that a stagehand, innocently adjusting the set, received a nasty scare when a patch of darkness removed itself from the rest of the shadows and became a man. His startled gasp earned him a hard, glittering look, and he suddenly remembered urgent business that he had to do elsewhere, anywhere but here. The man in black ignored the stagehand scampering off, turning his head slowly towards Mickey's dressing room, where she had disappeared moments ago. His boots were silent as he began to move towards her closed door. Mickey bustled around her dressing room, her face still lit up with the same strangely childlike smile she had worn in the ring. 
She was humming Trisha's music as she sat down at a vanity table and removed the elastics that held her hair in pigtails. She picked up a brush and started working it through the tangles that had been created in her hair during her tussle with Trish. In her mirror, she could clearly see the room behind her, and as she was gazing dreamily at her own reflection, the door right behind her swung slowly open. At first, she was worried that it was Trish, or even Ashley, coming for revenge, but she could see the whole room reflected in her mirror, and soon realized that no one could be in the room with her. It was not a large room, and the door was set dead center in the mirror. There would be no way for anyone to sneak up on her. She laughed self-mockedly <laughs> at her own jumpiness, and went back to brushing out her hair. The floor behind her creaked slightly. Still nervous, Mickey whirled around, her body moving so fast that her hair flung out in a semicircle around her head. A man was standing right behind her. It was impossible for anyone to have entered the room without her knowing, but he was still there. Her first impression of him was one of blackness and large green eyes. He looked familiar to her, although it took her a while to figure out who he was. One of the SmackDown wrestlers, she thought. Mickey didn't pay much attention to SmackDown because Trish was on Raw, but she realized that she had seen this man before. Everyone had. He had been around for years. It was The Undertaker, towering over her seated form, clad in black leather. She had to admit that he was intimidating. His hair flowing down over his shoulders and down his back gave the impression of darkness, but the light caught it and flared within it readily. She thought she could have dealt with all of these things, with his size and obvious strength, but she had lost her composure when she saw his eyes staring down at her. She found herself unable to speak, probably for the first time in her life. Fighting off her fear with limited success, she got unsteadily to her feet with the vague thought that he wouldn't seem so enormous if she wasn't sitting. Even standing, he towered more than a foot over her. He stood and stared down at her, showing no sign of telling her why he had invaded her room. She realized suddenly that she didn't know anything about him. Although she rarely paid attention, she knew the other wrestlers chatted incessantly about their families. But Undertaker never took part in any of these discussions. Actually, now that she thought about it, he was rarely seen outside of his infrequent appearance on SmackDown. He always seemed to take his wrestling character overly seriously, though. She had always believed that his persona was just an act, but the way he stood with his arms over his chest, staring at her was too much. He showed no sign of even the slightest breaking character. And then there was the fact that he hadn't appeared in her mirror, which she didn't really want to think about too much. She shook the thought away. Crossing her own arm, she tried to glare at him, although she knew the effect was spoiled by her having to look up at him to do it. When he finally spoke, she jumped, hating herself for doing so. Congratulations. His voice was rough and dark, and she had the sudden and completely irrelevant thought that it suited him. Mickey nodded at him a little uncertainly. For what? She was happy to note that her voice showed none of her unease, sounding just as bouncy and confident as ever. Still, Mickey was unable to ignore her breath catching in her throat, as the undertaker stepped even closer to her. The denim of her shirt skirt actually brushed against the black leather of his long coat. This close she could smell him. Irrelevantly, she noticed that he smelled like a masculine musk. It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. Sometime while she was musing, he had started talking. She shook her head berating herself for daydreaming with such a dangerous and unpredictable man in her dressing room. She didn't know a lot about him, but she did know that he was not someone to take lightly. Trish underestimated you, and she suffered for it. You were willing to do whatever it took, even kidnap someone. Mickey laughed nervously, her eyes being drawn continually upwards by his intense green stare. Time after time, she jerked her eyes away from his, only to realize soon after that they had returned there against her conscious will. Um, thanks, Undertaker? But you know, a lot of people call me a psycho. He shook his head, and she watched as his hair moved against his broad shoulders. Why was she noticing all these things about him? His hair glistening in the bright light, his muscles playing beneath his skin, the leather smell of his coat. How could these small details be so visible to her? Wondering dimly at her own presumption and sudden lack of fear, she slowly extended a hand and laid it on his chest above his shirt as he started speaking again. Strangely, his flesh was cool to the touch, though the room was warm. He looked down at her hand, resting on his chest, but did not comment. You are no more insane than I am, like you. I do what is necessary to get what I want. His eyes bored into hers as he raised his hands from his sides and laid them gently on her bare shoulders. Mickey shivered as he slowly drew her into his arms. If his chest had been slightly cool, his hands were like ice. They sent delicious tremors through her body and caused her nipples to harden into tight little points. She shook her head, trying to clear it, not understanding these disturbing reactions her body was having. He held her in her arms with a gentleness that was strangely sinister, perhaps because he was clearly capable of great strength. She looked up at him, and again felt like her body was reacting without her consent, as she reached her arms up and wrapped them around her neck. She hung off of him, her breath coming out of her mouth in little gasps, despite her efforts to keep it under control. His hands slid down over her shoulders and onto her back. His voice was even lower than usual when he spoke. You and I are much alike in our methods. She nodded, able to clearly remember several occasions that she had seen The Undertaker kidnap people on television. You're right. 
Her admissions seemed to open a floodgate within her, and she let go of the last of her inhibitions. As she pressed herself against him, she could feel something hard, pressing hard against her stomach. It was hard to tell through the obscuring leather, but it felt like it was quite large. Craning her neck, she looked up at him, with her lips smiling and parted in obvious invitation. He understood. Leaning down, his mouth claimed hers. She felt her lips open in reaction to the insistent probe of his tongue, and he thrust it into her mouth. The sensations his mouth and hands were sending through her body were overwhelming. So, throwing all caution to the wind, she launched herself at him. His hands went to her waist to steady her as she jumped up and wrapped her legs around his waist. Walking her arms firmly around his neck, she attacked his mouth with a series of savage kisses. Oh yeah! If he was surprised by her sudden change in behavior, he didn't show it. Instead, he crushed her body in his strong arms and carried her, still clinging to his waist and chest, to a small pink overstuffed couch. She didn't let go as he sat down, so she ended up straddling his lap while facing him. Their lips didn't part once the whole time. Mickey felt like her body was on fire, a marked contrast to his cool skin. His hands traced icy patterns over her heated flesh, and she tossed her head back in reaction to the feelings he was stirring inside of her. Her hair flew with the motion of her head, and she moaned as he slid his hands over her sides. Unable or at least unwilling to hold herself back anymore, her hands moved to the surprisingly soft black cotton of the shirt he wore. With a kind of insane laugh, she dug her long nails into the fabric and ripped it off. Shreds of the cloth flew all over the room. He laughed at her urgency, a very low, soft, and once again, strangely sinister sound. It echoed through the small room as he slid his chill fingers under the hem of her pink shirt. The skin beneath broke out in instant goosebumps as his cold flesh met her warm skin. Slowly, he moved his hands upward drawing her shirt over her head as he went. Deftly, he unhooked her bra and it dropped, unheated to land on top of her recently discarded shirt. She cried out as she felt the air hit her naked skin. His hands were all over her body as he placed his mouth upon hers once again. They slid up her thigh and under her skirt, resting momentarily on the white cotton of her panties before moving them deftly out of the way. She closed her eyes and raised her hips towards his gently probing fingers, moaning her encouragement as he slipped them inside of her. Suddenly, he pushed her, and she slid over his legs to rest on the floor. He stood and quickly pulled down his pants. Looking up at him, towering over her, she knew what he wanted from her, and it was the same thing she wanted. Sure of her intuition, she reached boldly up and grasped him in her small hand. She could feel him grow even harder as she shifted onto her knees in front of him. His hands came down, and his fingers tangled in her hair as she opened her mouth and extended her tongue to lick the salty tip of his cock. He made no noise or gesture, except perhaps that his hands tightened even more into her disheveled hair, but she was certain he approved. She opened her mouth again, but this time he thrust his hips and slid smoothly between her willing lips. Even here, he was cold. He smelled wonderful and tasted even better, but it felt like taking an enormous ice cube into her mouth. It was terrifying and perfect when he started moving within her mouth. Moaning deep within her throat, she reached around and grabbed his hips to pull him deeper into her. With that warning, he pulled out of her mouth and pulled up his pants. She looked up at him inquisitively. He didn't leave her puzzled for long. Extending his hand to her, he helped her off her knees. He crossed his arms over his broad chest once she gained her feet, and she stood before him, feeling a little like she was on trial. Suddenly self-conscious under his piercing stare, she crossed her own slender arms over her full breasts. He shook his head in denial of her attempt to cover herself from his eyes. No! 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 Slowly, he reached out a large hand and drew her arms away from her breast. She tried not to shake as his intense eyes roamed over her body. He seemed to take in all the details. The way her hips curved, the soft swell of her large breast, and even the way her nipples were hardening into rigid little buds under his gaze. Standing straight, she threw her shoulders back and returned his gaze, feigning a boldness she didn't feel. She was feeling many things, mostly lust, but she was a little surprised at her self-consciousness. Mickey James was many things, but Timid was not one of them. His eyes lit up like green fire with something she thought was desire. As he looked over her body, he took a step, closing the distance between them and drawing her into his arms again. She could feel her nipples hardening as her bare chest was pressed against his. Moaning a little, she felt quite daring as she smiled up at him. <laughs> In response, he lowered his fist to hers, their lips locked, and then he was picking her up in his massive strong arms and carrying her back to the couch. Standing her up on it, he ran his hands over the curve of her hips before grasping a double handful of her skirt. He tugged sharply downwards, anxious to be naked in front of him. She kicked her feet and sent the skirt flying across the room. While standing on the couch clad now only in her underwear, she watched as he stepped backward. Her rapt gaze stayed on him as his fingers went to the button on his leather pants. Definitely he unbuttoned them again. They slid down his long legs to pull at his feet. He stepped out of them and negligently kicked them out of the way. Now it's her turn to stare. She found herself unable to take her eyes off of him. His long hair flowing over his shoulders, his arms, chest, 
and legs powerfully muscled, the paleness of his skin broken only by his numerous tattoos, and most exciting, the way his cock was thrusting up into the air, long and hard and thick. She was suddenly not able to wait any longer for him. She jumped down off the couch and walked over to where he stood, placing her hands against his abdomen and trying not to get distracted by the way his muscles felt flexing under his skin. She pushed him urgently towards the couch. He resisted for a second and she got the impression that he was doing so just to prove that he could. Then he moved with her hands, allowing her to direct him towards the couch. Reaching up, she placed her hands on his shoulders and exerted pressure. Once again, for a time, he did not move, easily resisting even when she put all her might into it. It was as if her strength was a tiny thing next to his, as a child's might be to a full-grown man. Just when she was about to give up hope, he sat abruptly. She quickly scurried into his lap, moaning as his cold hands went around her waist. <sighs> Easily he positioned her so that he was resting right at the entrance of her body, almost, but not quite, inside of her. She could feel her whole body stiffen with the overwhelming desire to have him. She waited eagerly for him to pull her down, but he showed no sign of doing so. He merely sat with his hands at her waist, watching her face with no expression. I want you, she confessed, her hands running over his chest, shoulders, and back. He nodded, as if her confession was no surprise to him. Then take me. His voice was low and almost unbearably intimate. She didn't need any more encouragement. Grabbing onto his large shoulders, she thrust her hips down. She was very wet, and even though his size was a little daunting, he slid into her with very little resistance. She forgot how to breathe for a second, sitting and pulled on him. He growled wordlessly into her ear, and then, before she knew what had happened, she was on her back with him still inside her. She whimpered helplessly as he began to move his hips with exquisite slowness. Waiting desperately beneath him, she begged without words for something that she couldn't even name. Digging her fingers into the smooth cheeks of his ass, she pulled against him encouraging him to speed up. With painstaking slowness, he gave her what she wanted, only a little bit at a time, but she could feel herself getting closer to orgasm with every powerful stroke of his cock within her. Ooh. Every time she got close, he would grow still within her, denying her the release she craved. Over and over this happened until she pounded her hands against his chest in protest. She could have wept in gratitude when he sped up, pumping into her. She could feel her whole body tensing with her impending climax, and miraculously, this time he didn't stop. She moaned and thrashed helplessly under him as she came. Uh. Then it was his body that was shaking. He groaned and gathered her hands up in one swift motion. He pinned them over her head while he thrust away inside of her. She tensed and then she was sent over the edge again. Uh. Something that she had not known was possible for her. This time as she came, she felt him come with her. His hands tightened on her waist, and she felt his fluids inside of her as his eyes rolled back into his head. His eyes, just like on SmackDown, she thought, as he stopped moving and lay on top of her. She closed her eyes briefly, and when she opened them, he had gotten off of her and was gathering his clothes. I think we understand each other, he said, and then he was gone. The door was shut behind him, the sound echoing throughout the room with a kind of finality. Mickey lay back on the couch, heedless of her nakedness, her mind whirling crazily. Questions kept coming into her head but were gone before she could focus on them. There was only one that she could even keep in her mind long enough to look at. I didn't just have sex with The Undertaker, did I? She finally voiced it out loud. Only silence responded. <coughs> this story is called Touch the New Axe, and it is written by Literotica.com user Kimberly Kitten. Pete Knight and his mother Joanne Knight had just finished unloading all their stuff into their sixth and brand new house in Los Angeles, California. The reason why Pete and his mother had moved so many times is because of Pete's weight problem. At 18, Pete stood at 5'7 and weighed over 230 pounds. He was picked on and bullied at every school he attended. His mother kept moving from place to place with him so he could finally fit in somewhere. She thought that sending him to a private school in Los Angeles would finally be the answer for Pete to regain his self-esteem and confidence. Pete was one of those teens that at any moment could snap and commit suicide for being picked on all his life. He never had a girlfriend nor had many friends in his life. Pete was sure he was going to die alone and a virgin. I am recently lost my virginity. The first day at Pete's new school, none of the other students wanted anything to do with him. They would hide up in the corners making jokes about his weight, not quietly, but laughing out loud so he could hear them. Even at lunch, the lunch ladies only gave Pete small amounts of food so he wouldn't get any fatter or bust right in front of them. So they thought. As the school day ended, Pete tried to get on the bus, but the male bus driver closed the door as soon as the student in front of Pete got onto the bus. The bus driver said there wasn't enough room for Pete on the bus. You should walk some way off that fat ass, he said as he drove off. Pete saw that there were some empty seats on the bus, but he didn't sweat it. He decided to walk home alone. As he was walking, a red 2005 Mustang pulled up to the curve next to him. <laughs> get in, said a high-pitched female voice. Pete had his head down and immediately looked to see that it was Lita from the World Wrestling Entertainment who had offered him a ride. Pete thought he was streaming and felt his heart skip a few beats. Come on, silly, hop in, Lita repeated. Pete didn't know what to do. He just stood in shock, not moving a muscle. 
A pool of drool formed around his mouth, and Lita shook her head at the pathetic fat kid. Are you going to just stand there, or do you want to ride? Lita asked again. Pete finally snapped out of his daze and slowly got into Lita's Mustang. Lita drove off in a hurry before the media could see and spread rumors about her with the fat kid. What's your name? Lita asked. Pete looked over at Lita. She had on a Thai army t-shirt that showed off her beautiful brown stomach and navel piercing. The shirt made her enormous tits look rounder. Her jeans were baggy and combat boots rounded off her outfit. She looked like she was ready for war. Pete licked his lips and gazed back at Lita's face and started drooling again. Jeez, kid, you act like you've never driven a Mustang before. Or perhaps you never have. Either way, kid, we're neighbors. I live next to you, and I saw your mother and you moving in. I was going to welcome you guys, but I had some unfinished business to take care of with the movie of mine. Porn? Lita explained. Pete still didn't say a word as they arrived at Lita's house. Home, sweet home, Lita said as she got out of the Mustang and opened the door for Pete. Pete's mother came out of the house and greeted Pete and Lita. Thank you for picking up Pete. I hope he wasn't too much for you. I mean, being such a female wrestler and all, I'm sure glad you can take care of yourself. I'm glad to see that some wrestlers are as nice as you are. Pete's mother said, thanking Lita. No problem, ma'am. I know how it feels to be an outcast. Lita responded, Hey, if you're not busy, why don't you come over for dinner? I would love to have you over, and I'm sure Pete will be more talkative around dinner time. Pete's mom suggested. Sure, I'll be over, let's say, six? Lita suggested. Six it is. Peter's mother agreed. Come on, Pete. We have to get dinner started. Goodbye, Miss Lita. Pete finally spoke and continued to drool at the luscious female wrestler. Goodbye, Pete. Lita responded and blew a kiss at him from her full red lipstick-coated lips. Pete's heart sank to his stomach. He felt himself falling in love with the beautiful Spanish wrestler. As Lita was walking to her house, Pete watched her huge boobs bouncing up and down without the support of a brawl. He just wanted to reach out and touch them. Although Lita's tits were in plants, they bobbed and swayed like real, huge, natural breasts. Pete immediately ran upstairs to his room and pulled out a few WWE magazines with posters of Lita inside them. He locked his door and pulled out his six-inch hard cock and started jerking off like there was no tomorrow. Pete came within a matter of minutes, spraying his goo all over the Lita posters. Dinner time had arrived and the doorbell rang. <coughs> Pete quickly rushed downstairs and answered the door before his mother could. Lita stood in the doorway dressed in a spaghetti strap tank top covered by a see-through shirt top and a pair of tight-fitting black jeans. I hope I'm not too late, Lita said with a smile at Pete. Pete wore a pair of large overalls and said, Of course not, Lita. Come right in, please. Lita came into the house, and Pete's mother greeted her. They took Lita into the dining room, and Pete pulled out her chair. Thank you, Pete. You're such a sweet boy, Lita responded. Pete smiled and gazed at Lita throughout dinner, not even bothering to eat his hot meal for the first time in a long time. As dinner progressed, Lita got to know Pete and his mother a little bit better. She told Lita about the problems he had been having at different schools and cities. Lita told them about a similar childhood she used to have. Lita ended her speech by saying if it wasn't for the WWE and her fiancé Matt Hardy, she'd probably be dead right now. After hearing Matt's name, Pete's world came crashing down like the Twin Towers. He had forgotten about her relationship with Matt Hardy, one of the male wrestlers she works with. Thanks for the dinner, Miss Knight. It's been a while since I had a home-cooked meal since I'm on the road most of the time, Lita said. You're very welcome, Lita, Pete's mother replied. I'll talk to you later, Pete. Lita said as she was leaving the house. Pete had a depressed look on his face as he headed upstairs to his room. His mother was worried about him and knew she couldn't do anything to bring him out of his funk. It got darker and Pete was ready to hit the hay. He changed into his pajamas. He put his hands on his huge belly and started jiggling it, wishing it never existed. <laughs> Pete went over to his computer and logged on to his email. Out of the corner of his eye, he could see right into Lita's bedroom. The curtains were wide open and he was hoping to see her get undressed. Lita came into the room already wearing a pair of skimpy panties and a loose tank top that hung away from her body due to her enormous titties. Pete's cock started to get hard while Lita was walking around her room. He watched her huge boobs bobbing up and down inside her top. He wished his head were between them. Suddenly, a pop-up came up in front of Pete's computer. It was selling this new body Axe deodorant called Touch. Touch, the new fragrance from Axe. Pete started to remember about the things he heard about the Axe deodorant. It gave a nerd the power to seduce a busty German girl and her mother. He heard about the deodorant turning a trailer park family into a giant orgy stable. Pete wondered if the deodorant could work for him and get Lita to seduce him. Pete kept fantasizing about fucking Lita's brains out and was about to blow a huge load inside his pajamas until he saw Matt Hardy enter Lita's bedroom. Pete got angry but continued to watch to see what would happen. Lita removed Matt's shirt and pushed him down on the bed. Matt sat up and immediately squeezed Lita's mountainous jugs while kissing her flat brown stomach. Pete was wishing his hands were squeezing Lita's enormous breast. Lita got down on her knees and started to unzip Matt Hardy's jeans. 
His huge nine and a half inch cock sprung out from the slit inside his shorts and right at Lita. Lita took his huge white cock and started stroking it. Pete got closer to the window sill to get a better view. Lita started bobbing her head up and down Matt's monstrous cock. Her small hands were fondling Matt's large balls while she impelled most of Matt's huge cock down her throat. Matt ran his hands through Lita's silky red hair and started helping her head sink down more and more of his cock meat. Lita had about seven inches of his manhood down her throat. Pete pulled out his hard cock and started stroking it while watching Lita give her fiancé the blowjob of the year. Matt's eyes looked over to the open window in Lita's room. He told her to hold on a second. He pulled his monstrous cock out of Lita's slobbery mouth and walked over to the window with his huge wet rod bobbing up and down between his legs like a billy goat club. Matt closed the curtains, blocking Pete's view from all the action. Of course, Pete got angry with Hardy and sat in his chair pissed off. That's best. Arms folded over his large stomach and man boobs. Then it hit Pete. He looked at his computer and saw the ad for the Touch Body Spray still up. He logged on to Amazon.com and bought a can of the X spray called Touch. It would take at least two to three business weeks for the X to arrive to his house. Pete didn't know if he could last that long as he fell asleep in his king-size bed, thinking about the wonderful fucking Lita and him were going to do. To get home from school, Pete took the same route he took the day Lita picked him up. He was expecting Lita to arrive and pick him up every day since then, but Lita was a no-show. He had forgotten that Lita had to go back on the road for the WWE for a while. One Thursday evening, Pete got out of school and headed home. He was surprised to see Lita's car parked in front of her house, and Matt Hardy's car happened to be across the street. Wanting to know what was going on, Pete set his backpack on his porch and started looking around Lita's house for an open window. Lita's living room window was slightly open, and Pete was stunned at, at what he saw. Matt Hardy was behind Lita, thrusting his huge cock between her ass cheeks. Lita had a painful facial expression and was clawing at the carpet. Her gigantic melons looked like they were about to get rug burns from dragging up and down across the carpet. Pete's cock instantly grew hard as the vision and sound of Lita moaning was turning him on. He saw the way Lita's ass jiggled as Matt pounded her ass. His cock looked balls deep in Lita's asshole. I'm talking about balls deep. I'm talking about balls deep. Lita's face showed the pain and agony she was in. Pete whipped out his cock and started jerking off. He continued to watch Hardy pound Lita's backside while his hands worked her soaked cunt. Pete heard his mother open the front door, and before he could come, he shoved his cock back into his jeans, and his cum started flowing down his thighs and legs. There you are, Pete. I was getting worried that you didn't make it home on time, Pete's mother told him. Don't go bothering our nice neighbor. You'll get a chance to see her later. She's coming over with a big surprise for you. Pete cracked a smile, but he didn't know why. He didn't know what the surprise was, but all he knew was that Lita was coming over later, and he was happy about that. Pete was up in his room waiting for Lita to come out of her house. He saw her front door open up, and Matt Hardy came out with a huge grin on his face. Lita came out next wearing what looked to be just a huge long t-shirt with the words, Grab these, stretched across her massive chest. Hardy gave Lita a hug and a kiss before taking off in his car. Pete's cock hardened just at the side of Lita standing on her porch, barefooted with just a long t-shirt on. The Grab these logos didn't help Pete's horniness any. Pete jumped on his bed, nearly breaking the mattress underneath it, and started stroking his cock until he had come all over his fat, chubby hands. His cum even spurted up to his large belly. After 15 minutes of lying in this bed, his mother called for him to come downstairs. Pete immediately knew Lita had arrived. He rushed downstairs, belly flopping and all, and was greeted by his mother and Lita. Hey, Pete. Long time no see. Lita said, smiling at him. Hey, Lita. Pete responded, making a few glances down Lita's tight tank top that bulged her oversized breast out. Listen, Pete, I am going to be wrestling at the Los Angeles Staples Center this weekend. I was wondering if your mom and you would like to attend the event, Lita asked, while holding out two front row tickets and backstage passes to the wrestling event. Pete started gasping for air and was about to faint. His mother had to respond for him. I think he means yes, Pete's mother told Lita. Great. I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Bye, Pete. Bye, Miss Knight. Lita left and headed back to her house. Pete finally came to, and his mother handed him the tickets and backstage passes. Hold on to these, Pete. Don't lose them, or we won't be going to the show tomorrow. Also, Pete, a package came for you. It's on the kitchen table. I must have forgotten to tell you about it when you came home. Pete's eyes got wider, and he knew it had to be the Axe body deodorant. He went into the kitchen and picked up his package. He went upstairs and entered his room. He closed the door and locked it. He immediately ripped open the package, and his touch body spray was inside a box labeled Touch, the new fragrance from Axe. Warning, this body spray known as Touch is a very dangerous and lethal spray. 
that have fallen into the wrong hands could lead to some serious trouble. The touch acts deodorant causes women to be seduced by anything you touch or do that will lead into a sexual behavior. Pete didn't really care and ripped open the box. He held his touch body spray high into the air and pretended God was shining down a white beam of light, giving the body spray his blessing. Pete was enthusiastic about using his body spray, that he wanted to make sure that the spray worked before using it on Lita. Pete sprayed some of the touch deodorant on himself and decided to go down to the corner store where a busty store clerk works. Once Pete got to the corner store, he, he hit him back where he could still see the busty blonde store clerk. She was wearing her very tight flannel shirt and helping a customer check out their things. Pete was ready to try out his new superpowers, so so to speak. He took a bag of chips and ripped them open. Soon after the bag of chips ripped open, so did the busty clerk shirt. Her buttons came flying off and her huge bare boobs sprung out like the warps in a joke can. Her bare trembling breasts outraged the customers. Well, at least the women were outraged. The men seemed to be entertained by the clerk. The busty clerk tried to cover herself up, but her boobs were too big to hide in her arms. She ran into the back while the manager came out and had to calm down the customers. Pete was giggling and headed out of the store. His cock did get hard when he saw her huge boobs busting out of her shirt. That was the first time Pete had ever seen real boobs. He was happy and wanted to satisfy himself. He hid over behind a dumpster and released his cock and started jerking. Oh, I love trash. Suddenly, the big boobed clerk rushed out from the back of the store and into the alleyway. She was surprised to see a fat kid with his pants down, holding his small cock. She licked her lips at Pete, who just stood there staring at her. The clerk pulled off her coat and bared her big breast to Pete once again. This time, she did it willingly. She walked up to Pete and smashed her huge tits against his own huge man boobies. Pete didn't know what to do. He was in shock and waited for the girl to make her move. The clerk dropped down to her knees and immediately swallowed Pete's entire cock down her throat. Pete had no idea what it felt like having his cock sucked until now. This busty store clerk was giving him his first blowjob. He felt his first pair of huge boobs against his own, besides his mother's always hugging him. Pete just rusted up against his store wall as the clerk sucked and teased his cock with her mouth and tongue. Pete felt her hands fondling his big balls. She took Pete's cock out of her mouth and started stroking it while blowing her hot breath against his swollen nuts. Then Pete felt her incredible warm mouth engulf his balls and her tongue swirling around each of them. Pete was ready to come but tried to fight off the urge. The busty clerk released his cock and balls and placed them between her enormous hooters. Oh, God, 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 moaned Pete as the busty clerk started banging her huge breasts against his huge thighs while rubbing his thick and small cock up and down between her tits. Pete never felt a female near his genitals until today. He moaned and groaned loudly. People walking by the alleyway could hear his cries but ignored them. The busty clerk held her big tits together and rapidly thrusted Pete's stick between her soft melon tonner. I'm, 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 I'm going to k k k come signaled Pete as he felt his cock throbbing to the breaking point and his balls starting to release his white milk between the busty clerk's cleavage. <laughs> the clerk dropped her tits and took Pete's cock back into her mouth. Pete's pee hole gushed out thick in enormous loads of hot cum. The clerk swallowed every gush that sprayed into the back of her throat. A tingly feeling surged through Pete's body, especially in his cock and balls as he unloaded down the clerk's mouth. Once his cock was empty of cum, the clerk kissed his cock head with her gooey mouth and passed out right in front of Pete. Pete had gotten off his tingly feeling and saw the clerk down. He didn't know what to do, so he pulled up his pants and ran home as fast as his fat ass would take him. Halfway through the running, he had to stop and take a breather. It only took him 10 minutes to get to the corner store and 20 minutes for him to return home. The next day arrived and Pete had gotten up from a good night's sleep. He was so excited about the wrestling event that he went to school with a huge smile. The students and teachers around Pete didn't know why he was carrying a huge grin on his face throughout the entire day. Even the students who picked on him couldn't get Pete to crack under fire. Some of the students were shouting, Did the ice cream man come into town? Or, is the Dunkin' Donuts guy your father and you're taking over his business? Dunkin', your place for coffee. Or, he's happy because he finally got to see his feet. Everything the students could throw at Pete didn't affect Pete throughout the entire day. Pete arrived home from school and Lita's car wasn't there. She must have been at the Staples Arena already, Pete thought. He rushed into his house, ate dinner with his mom, and killed time until it was time for them to head over to the Staples Arena, where Pete was going to finally score with the beautiful Lita, or so he thought. Pete and his mother arrived at the Staples Center, and were lucky to find an empty parking spot close to the arena. Once Pete and his mother entered the building, a security officer had their names down on a piece of paper that Lita had given him. He took Pete and his mother to the wrestlers' locker rooms, where they got to meet all the WWE wrestlers from Rawls, Triple H and Evolution, to SmackDown's Booker T and the legendary Undertaker. Pete was so excited about tonight. The security officer led Pete and his mother to Lita's locker room. There, Pete got to see all of the beautiful divas of the WWE, from Trish Stratus being in just a towel to Tori Wilson fixing her brawl cups to bulge the tops of her beautiful breast over them. Pete thought he was the lucky 
luckiest man alive to be in the Divas locker room. He started gasping for air and thought he was dying and going to heaven. Pete had never been around beautiful, busty girls in his life. His face was blushing red and his cock was working overtime not to become hard and exploit in his jeans. Lucky for Pete, he had sprayed himself with a touch before arriving to the arena, but brought the bottle with him just in case the effects wore off. Pete wanted to test the spray out again. He started ripping at the cuffs of his long sleeve shirt. Molly Holly had happened to be bending over, lacing her boots up. Molly is known for her huge white ass in the WWE. Pete ripping at his cuffs caused Molly's black tights to rip down the middle of her huge ass. Her grand knee panties were exposed. The other divas started laughing at Molly. <laughs> Molly felt very embarrassed and stormed out of the locker room. Pete bent down to untie his shoes, and, N- and Nadia's tight halter top started to come unlaced. When Nadia went to bend over, her massive brown breast spilled out of her halter, swam back and forth like windshield wipers. Oh my god! Nadia shouted, trying to cover up her enormous tits with her arms. Pete's cock was extremely hard, and he just wanted to jerk off in front of all the divas, but his mother was with him. Hey Pete! Hey Miss Knight! Lita greeted them, wearing her wrestling outfit, a pair of gray baggy jeans, and a black tank top that showed off her magnificent breasts perfectly. I'm glad you guys could make it. I'm going to be in a tough three-way dance with Molly Holly and Trish tonight. I'm counting on your support, Pete, Lita said smiling at him. All Pete could picture was Lita's mouth being stuffed by Matt Hardy's huge prick from a few weeks ago. I'll be chanting your name, Lita, Pete finally responded. Great. Security will take you guys to your special front row seats. And I can't wait to introduce you guys to Matt and all the other WWE wrestlers after the show, Lita said. Pete didn't really care to see the other wrestlers, especially Matt. All he wanted was for his plans to go down the way he wanted them to. As he and his mother were leaving the Divas locker room, they bumped into Kane, who was known as the Big Red Machine, or the Monster. Pete couldn't believe how ugly Kane was in real life. How you doing, little boy? Kane said in his rough voice. He stared at Pete hard like he was trying to burn a hole through him. Pete didn't know what to say or do. Ha 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 ha! Kane laughed wickedly. See you in hell, boy. (laughs) Pete's mother wrapped her arms around Pete, and the two hurried off to their seats. Unaware to Pete, his touch body spray had fallen out of his pocket when he had bumped into Kane. Kane saw the spray on the ground and picked it up. He looked straight ahead to see a small image of Pete and his mother. Then he looked back at the touch body spray and started his insane laugh again. Wasn't he a weirdo? said Pete's mother as the two of them got to their seats. The arena was packed with screaming wrestling fans. The show had gotten underway, a few male matches took place, and Pete wasn't very interested in them. He just couldn't wait until Lita finally came out for her match. Pete didn't have to wait that long. The three-way dance match was next. Lita came out, followed by Molly Holly and then Trish Stratus. Pete wanted to spray himself with the touch deodorant, and he realized that he didn't have it on him. Oh, fuck! Pete said to himself. He got on the ground and started searching for it. While he was doing that, the women's match was over. Lita and Molly had lost to Trish. When Pete heard Trish's music playing, he got really pissed off that he didn't get to strip any of the girls. Said Pete as he left the crowd and headed to the backstage. Pete started searching all over the arena for his axe. He was panicking and gasping for air, thinking thinking about what if someone else had his axe. Then he remembered that he was in the Divas locker room when he last used it. Pete traced his steps back to the Divas locker room. Pete opened the door and the lights were out. I knew you would come, said a deep and mysterious voice. The next thing Pete knew, he was out like a light from a blow to the skull. When Pete had awoke and the lights were on and he was tied up and gagged to a chair, Kane was sitting across from him holding the touch axe deodorant. Looking for this, Kane teased while smiling wickedly. All Pete could do was mumble and grunt at Kane having his axe. I could tell from the look in your eyes that you were planning on using this on poor old Lita. I mean, she was the one who brought you here with the free backstage pass and all. It just so happens that Lita is in the shower right now and should be out shortly. I bet she'll be surprised to see you, said Kane, followed by his insane laugh. (laughs) Pete started sweating really hard and his face was flushed out. He couldn't believe he was about to be busted. Then suddenly Kane sprayed the touch onto himself and gave Pete an evil look. Pete was frightened for his life and tried to break free. Pete was wiggling and bouncing up and down in the chair like a madman. Kane kicked Pete dead in his face to get him to stop his moving. The chair fell backwards and Pete felt like his face was just hit with a ton of bricks. Uh Uh-oh, here comes Lita, Kane said acting all surprised. He picked Pete's chair up so he was facing the branch. Lita came out of the shower room, wearing nothing but a towel. What the hell is going on here? said a confused and stunned Lita. Pete's eyes were bulging out of his head as he saw Lita, all soaking wet and nothing but a towel, that hung away from her body a little because of her enormous rat. Kane looked at Lita and gave her a lustful look. What the hell is going on here, Kane? Lita asked again in an angry tone. Leave Pete alone, you sick bastard. You're only supposed to play one, not be one in real life. Oh no, she didn't! <laughs> Kane smiled at Lita and ripped off his black and red tights. With that, Lita's towel came right off as well, bearing her naked body to both Pete and Kane's wondering eyes. Pete felt his heart about to stop as his eyes landed right on Lita's huge flopping titties. They looked so natural and soft. Little drops of water were still moving along her breast. Her nipples were big and thick, yawning for a warm mouth to capture them. Her pussy was hidden in a thick patch of pubic hairs. No wonder the WWE never puts Lita in bikini or brawn panty matches. Pete saw Lita's eyes begin to lust for Kane. 
Pete moved his eyes down to Kane's boxers and saw his giant cock sticking straight up at Lita. Watch and learn, kid, laughed Kane to a helpless Pete. Lita started walking towards Kane slowly. Pete's eyes followed Lita's naked body. His eyes landed on her big, firm ass that jiggled slightly as she was walking. Lita finally made it to Kane and lightly brushed her hands against his monstrous pecs. Kane's huge cock was pressing firmly against Lita's flat tummy. Kane started thinking about the pregnant storyline Lita and him had a while ago. He didn't get the chance to really have sex with Lita, but now he was about to experience the real thing, and Pete was helpless to do anything about it. Lita immediately dropped to her knees and pulled down Kane's large boxers. His 11 and a half inch cock sprang out at her. <laughs> His thick shaft was throbbing while his huge cock head was turning bright purple from the extreme hard on. Lita's tiny hands wrapped around Kane's giant dick, but only halfway. Pete couldn't believe what he was seeing. It was supposed to be him fucking Lita and not Kane. Pete continued to try his best to get free, but the ropes were too tight around him. He was forced to watch Kane have his way with busty Lita. Lita's mouth started traveling up and down the sides of Kane's monstrous cock. They didn't call Kane the big red machine for nothing. Lita slurped and sucked all along the sides of Kane's pulsing shaft. Kane tilted his head back and was enjoying the pleasure of Lita's mouth. Lita was sucking and licking Kane's dick like a popsicle on the verge of melting. Her tongue started swiftly licking the bottom of Kane's thick cock meat, traveling down to his enormous set of balls. Lita took one into her mouth and let her tongue swirl around it a few times. She then repeated the process to his other huge ball, dragging them along her wet tongue and pressing her nose into his huge cock, getting a great smell of Kane's foul odor. That didn't stop Lita as she continued to work his big balls into overtime. Pete was on the verge of insanity. He could couldn't stand watching Lita suck away at Kane's cock and hearing the disgusting sucking and slurping sounds Lita had been making. Even more, Pete couldn't stand Kane's moaning and groaning as Lita worked his hard cock. <sighs> Kane placed his hands on Lita's shoulders and rammed half his huge cock between her lips. Lita's face had turned to that of a blowfish, sliding more and more of Kane's meat down her throat. Lita was a good deep throater, and Matt Hardy could back it up. Oh yes! Oh god, fucking yes! moaned Kane. Your mouth and my cock make a perfect match, Lita. Lita was sucking harder on Kane's cock, bobbing her head up and down, making her wet red hair fly in all directions. Her giant breasts were flopping against each other with her sucking rhythm. Kane started thrusting his cock in and out of Lita's mouth, trying to match her bobbing. Saliva poured out between Lita's lips and down Kane's huge balls and thighs. Lita's chest was beginning to glisten from the saliva as well. Matt Hardy is one lucky Lita fucker, Kane joked, as he thrusted harder and faster down Lita's throat. Lita barely had time to take a breath as Kane's pre-cum started oozing in her mouth. Kane pulled his dripping wet cock out of Lita's mouth and started slapping her in the face with it, smearing her own saliva against her soft cheeks and sweaty forehead. Kane looked over at Pete, who was foaming at the mouth. Kane just laughed <laughs> and continued beating Lita's face with his monstrous prick. Kane then positioned Lita on the bench. Once she does, her massive titties spread across her chest like pancakes. Kane cupped Lita's huge mouths in his large hands and started kneading them like raw dough. That's when Pete started to go crazy and tried to free himself. He wanted his hands to fill and squeeze Lita's breast. Watching Kane having his fun with them was killing the fat kid. The way Kane ran his hands over them and pinched at her large nipples. Kane lifted her big tits up by their nipples and started jiggling her tit flesh. It was mesmerizing to watch Lita's huge jugs jiggling widely by their nipples. Mmm, these things feel so good, Kane moaned. These things can pass off as being natural knockers. Lita squealed with pleasure as Kane pinched and tugged her hard nipples while wobbling her massive melons by them. Both her tits looked like enormous jello, jello cones with red cherries on top being tugged. Kane pressed his big ugly face against Lita's huge right tit. His nasty, disgusting mouth was crammed with Lita's soft tit, sucking hard on it while his large tongue worked around her fat nipple. He flicked her delicious bud back and forth inside his mouth with his tongue, moving up and down, back and forth running circles around her large areolas. His hands were busy squeezing and jiggling her left breast. Oh! Oh, God! cried Lita, as her stiff nipple being chewed on by Kane's rotten teeth. Kane dropped her entire right tit out from between his lips, soaked in his saliva. He did the same to her left tit, sucking and squeezing the big tit between his lips, making Lita's pussy burn like fire. Pete saw Lita's pubic hairs become creamy like sour cream dip. Her thighs were wet from the juices flowing from her cunt. Kane continued his assault on Lita's chest, pressing her huge mouths against his head, licking away at her salty cleavage. Lita's tits were covered with hickeys and covered in Kane's saliva. Her nipples were red and swollen with teeth marks on them. Kane started kissing down from her breast and ran his tongue inside her belly button. He could smell the sweet aroma of her cunt, licking furiously down her thighs. Uh. Kane leveled his head at her cunt and grounded his face deep into her soaked womb. Lita spread her legs wide and high into the air. Her toes were curling as Kane licked her pussy from the inside out, tasting her juicy cunt as her juices spilled all over his face. His tongue darted in and out of Lita's hairy cunt, sending chills throughout her body. Pete's cock was beyond hard. He felt it growing a few more inches and ready to bust out of his jeans. All he could think about was jerking off the Lita and Kane having sex. The pain of his throbbing cock was killing him more than watching Lita being fucked by Kane. Mmm! I think your pussy is ready for my big monster. 
grinned Kane at Lita. Don't you wish your tiny cock could slide in and out of Lita's cream pie? Kane teased Pete. Kane stuck his thick fingers inside of Lita's stretching pussy, probing the inside of it. Once he got enough juices on his fingers, he took them out and slid them into Lita's mouth, letting Lita taste her own cum. Pete couldn't bear the view anymore. He literally just wanted to die as Kane started easing his monstrous cock between Lita's soaked womb. That's it. Easy. Easy does it. Kane coached Lita as she pushed herself down against his giant cock as well. Kane took hold of Lita's ample orbs and started bucking his crotch against hers. Lita could feel this powerful throbbing cock, drilling her sore and wet cunt. Kate had eight inches balls deep in Lita's pussy as he pounded away at it. Oh god, kid. You should feel her pussy juice around your cock. It's a wonderful feeling. Kane teased Pete. Lita's enormous breasts were bouncing and jumping around in Kane's hands as he felt them up while pounding her pussy. Lita couldn't bear the pain of this enormous cock probing her insides. She closed her eyes and started breathing heavy, thrashing her head around and clawing at the branch. Oh yes, so tight, Kane moaned as he released Lita's bouncing tits and held her legs far apart. Kane was determined to slide his entire cock between Lita's pussy lips. Pete was being tortured by the big red machine and knew no reason why. He figured Kane was the bully type and knew Kane was fucking Lita just to destroy his self-esteem and confidence, something Lita had helped him recover the first day he met her in person. Kane positioned his back up against a locker and Lita had her back facing him as she pressed and rode his cock. Pete was going insane and just wanted to reach out and grab at least one of Lita's giant tits bouncing up and down in front of him. Ah! Ah! It hurts. Ah! Moaned Lita as she started to come all over Kane's giant cock and balls. Kane continued bouncing Lita on his cock, stuffing his entire monster between her cunt walls. Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh good god yes! Moaned the big red machine as his big machine thrust it harder and faster into Lita's tight cunt. Kane wrapped his large arms around Lita's stomach and positioned them on the ground. Lita was on all fours while Kane resumed, pounding her doggy style. Pete got a close-up of Lita's face as it was in pain, yet she was enjoying every thrust Kane made to her pussy. Her sweaty breasts dangling at the ground and swaying from side to side. Back and forth was mesmerizing to Pete until Kane's large hands gripped her breasts from underneath and started bouncing them at Pete. These humongous breasts are just a delight to play with, Petey. You should fill these soft jugs sinking through your fingers by ripping Lita's coochie apart with your cock, Kane continued to tease. Lita's pussy started to clamp down on Kane's thrusting cock. Orgasms sweep through her body and she started to come again. Kane pounded her pussy harder and faster, making her come again just minutes after. Finally, Kane felt his cum-filled balls ready to unload. He pulled out of Lita's drenching snatch and named his cock right in Pete's face. Pete was frightened and his eyes got larger. Kane's enormous cock started spraying his face with <laughs> this hot gooey cum. Pete felt so humiliated as his face was dripping from ear to ear with cum. Kane took his finger and wiped some of the cum off Pete's face and stuck it inside Lita's mouth. Didn't that feel good, Petey? Kane said laughing. Ken wrapped Lita's small towel around his waist and untied Pete from the ropes. Lita was passed out from the long, hard fucking. Ken left the locker room, laughing his ass off. <laughs> Pete fell to his knees in front of a naked and battered, unconscious Lita. His face was oozing with Ken's gooey milk, and his life had just changed forever. Pete used his shirt to wipe off Ken's cum and headed out of the locker room. Pete could barely stand and walk straight. He was stumbling over boxes and bumping into many of the WWE agents in the back. He didn't say a word to any of them that asked if he was all right. He continued to walk with a blank stare on his face. The wrestling event had ended, and Pete's mother, Joanne, saw Pete walking out of the parking lot. Many officials and wrestlers found an unconscious and naked Lita lying in the back. They notified the police in the arena and a few officials named Pete as a rapist because he was seen coming from her locker room, confused and dazed. Pete's mother did not believe the officials and tried to stop the police from arresting her only son. The police and Pete's mother followed Pete to the outside where Pete had unfortunately walked right in front of a speeding semi truck in the middle of the road and got his body shattered to pieces. Pete's mother was horrified by the sight and fainted. One month later, a funeral was held for Pete in his honor. A few people who knew Pete showed up, including Lita, who had the next day after Pete's death confessed that she didn't know what had happened during the hour she was in the Divas locker room. Later that night after the funeral, Lita was scheduled to wrestle. Before the match could begin, Lita gave a special shout out to her biggest fan, Pete. The end. Thank you for listening to episode number Cinco or five of Wrestle Erotica. We hope that you enjoyed this week's stories as always. Please be sure to subscribe to us on Stitcher, Player.fm, iTunes. Also, be sure to visit our website at WrestleRoticaPod.com. Please be sure to check out fellow podcasts, Kayfabe Connection and Shoot Network. Shoot Network is a really cool idea that just launched yesterday, and they are basically trying to be a network 24-7 podcast. Thank you for listening to Wrestle Rotica. <laughs>